It's think. not easy, this. I mean, it is the sort of king of the beef meal, isn't it? It is the poshest pie in the world. Yeah, Let's yeah. be put it that way. Yeah, it's that's... a posh pie. And the thing about it is the piece of fillet is really expensive, so you put lots of pastry on the outside of it and make it stretch a really long way. So this one I'm going to make is enough probably for 10 people, but you don't have to cook a big piece, you can cook a small piece. But there's a lot that can go wrong. You've got beef that you don't want to overcook, you've got pastry that you don't want to have a soggy bottom. Yes. So how do you do this then? Right, so this is the, this, the each stage in itself just helps each other along. Okay. The first and the most important bit is actually sealing the beef. So the beef itself has got to be sealed really, really well and seasoned very, very well because okay. this is the bit where you get flavour. Right. Without doing this, you don't get any flavour. It becomes really bland. OK. So this bit here, and then once we've sealed this and we seal it on each side and get some colour on it, then it's got to sit and cool down. Because the problem with a lot of people when they do beef wellington is they don't let things cool down enough. And when you wrap the pastry around something which is hot, uh. the pastry melts. Then you end up with a soggy bottom. OK. That, I, thought, um, I would never have let it cool down when yeah, I did. Yeah, so let, always Can let it cool down. Can you seal it? Yeah. What about the two end bits? Do you have to seal the ends as well? They will, if you look at it here... It will now, just do it on its own. My tongue's just oh. broken. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right. One of those things. Sorry yeah, about that. it actually seals itself, really, because as you try to do it... I see what you're saying. That's fine. So as but a, you could, you could, if you're careful, you could lift it up and seal either end. Yeah, but you don't need to, because it will actually... And the, the edges of the pan is absolutely fine. Okay. Whilst that seals away, the two main flavourings that go with it, chicken liver pa pa mm. pate and a mushroom pate, which is called a duck cell. All the recipes online, it's all there for everybody to look at. Um, and then it's sort of lots of mushrooms all chopped up in shallots and then cooked. And then they're all cooled down as well. And that mix, this bit here... Do you have to get all the water out of those mushrooms? They will dry out. They go... Yeah, absolutely. Just but you've, dry you've got some, um, like, what they look like seps or something there, porcini, that are, that are dry. So you've used those and ordinary buttons, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. But the thing about the seps is they take, they take place of the salt. They're really quite salty, almost like seaweed. You know, sort of that sort of uh, marmite type yeah. flavour, that umami. That's exactly what it is. That, so, so you see the colour of this now. I mean, it's stunning. That's the colour you want. That's flavour and that colour is really important. So that's sealed off. Let that cool down and you end up with a piece like this. Yeah. How long do you let that cool down? Cool down, down in the fridge for a good half an hour, an hour. I mean, this is a oh. process. The great thing about making this, though, it can sit in the fridge for a day and then you don't have to cook it to the next day. It's fine, ah, once you've done okay. it. So you, you sort of get it done whenever you like, really. Look at Christmas, then, this. And you can freeze it when it's all assembled. Oh, right, wow. So then you just put this pâté and stuff on top, mm -hmm. and you spread it on the top as if you were doing peanut butter on toast. So a really good quantity of, 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 of the whole mushroom pâté thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what this does is just helps the seasoning, but it also protects the fillet. The reason that beef wellington is beef wellington is that it's to keep the meat as moist as possible. OK. And that's what you're making it for. So that's done that bit. The next bit is to really stop your soggy bottom. Oh, you are posh. I've never put parma ham in a beef wellington. This bit here wraps around the outside. That stops all the juice from going outside into your pastry. Mm -hmm. And this is also, again, the salt. Oh, so you've redone... So you've started... You're going to put that on the top. So you've yeah. done a crisscross here. Yeah, so like a lattice type idea. Yeah. I'm sorry, does that only go on once? Oh, you're about... Oh, OK. And then I just do the rest of it. Yeah. So it's done. And you know, really, and if you don't like pate, you don't have to use it. If you don't like mushrooms, that's fine. It's just that sort of lovely flavour thing. Might you piece of game? Give me months. Right. That They're not now, saying anything interesting. Fine. Don't worry. Mm. Then you just with, use cling film rather than your hands. Try when you're doing things like this. Don't use your hands too much because your hands are hot. And the more you you touch it, the hotter it gets. And again, you're back to that situation of melting your pastry. Mm -hmm. So if you keep on your hands away from it all the time, fold it all up like that. Make sure the ham's all wrapped around the outside, and especially on the ends. Buy That's very smart. Buy, then, once you've done that, you sort of just pat him all down, look after him. And it's not a cheap Could thing. you stroke that? <coughs> yeah, that's all right. So you pat that, right? that down all right? Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Fun. <laughs> Carry on. Yes. Now from there, onto your pastry, which is pre-rolled. And again, your pastry's on, on paper, so you don't touch it. All right. Egg wash, which is just eggs beaten with salt so that they become liquid. And you just do that across the, the outside. Mm -hmm. And then literally use your bit of paper, again like you're sort of a mat, and roll that up that way. Again, you're not touching it. No, I see. So you don't yeah. really touch it, because once you touch it, your pastry starts to melt. Huh. Then you just simply tuck it underneath, but as if you were wrapping a Christmas present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you bring the... That's now going to be my bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Sense. So you hide all that. That's right. Keep it, then turn it over, and this is the really important bit. 
is you must put it on paper. If you don't put it on paper, it, it, on be, paper. it must be on paper. Why? Otherwise, it, it, will, it will soggy. It will go soggy. The paper oh. is the foil grease between... Greaseproof paper? Yep, greaseproof paper. And then you can decorate any way you like. These little leaves, we've got a little cutter These are here. clever, clever little cutter. Yeah, they are. Aren't they cover. gorgeous? So those, you just, again, you just brush the top. That's like almost going to make it look too good as if you bought it and not made it yourself. But that's all right. It's not, if you're going to do something like this, I think you've got to be a little bit posh and do nice things. And I, I usually use the scrap of the puff pastry and roll it up to make roses or whatever. But that's absolutely fine. Oh, it's so nice. Now,